Hey Nathan, if you had like 80K burning a hole in your pocket, what car would you get? The one behind me. Which is? It is a brand spanking new Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio. How much is it? About $88,000. Whoa, that is a lot of money. Well, I've got the brand new BMW X3 M competition and they directly compete. They do, they're both awesome cars. They are, they sound incredible, but I've also brought the Tesla Model X non-competition because today we're gonna do a bunch of drag races. So first we're gonna find out which of these two European cars is faster in a straight line and then the winner will take on the Tesla. What do you say? I say buongiorno, that sounds like a great idea. I say sehr gut. This is the spicy Italian meatball. <laughs> 505 horsepower, 443 pound-feet of torque. This is a 2.9 liter twin turbocharged V6 and it feeds into a eight-speed automatic transmission. All that power goes to four wheels because it's an SUV and it actually has all-wheel drive. sounds good <laughs> but the problem is is that this car weighs about 100 pounds more than the BMW that could be a problem hey guys you too can come out here to imimotorsports.com by clicking on the link below running the track trying the motocross it's just a real lot of fun especially on this the largest go-kart track in the state of Colorado so get this I've got two less horsepower 503 442 pound-foot of torque, eight-speed automatic, all-wheel drive, but the BMW competition is the most powerful of the breed and the lightest of these two at least because this weighs 100 pounds less, which should mean it should be faster. <laughs> And you may not believe this, well, if you're a BMW fan, you certainly will. Under all this plastic is a classic three liter straight six twin turbo. I mean, you can see the pipes, but you can't see the power plant, which is a real shame because BMW builds some of the best straight sixes out there. Why do they hide it? Where are you? Where are you, three liter? Hey guys, so I'm in the BMW, uh, sehr gut BMW, and uh, luckily my friend and producer Zach set up these M buttons to give me everything I need for a drag race. So I just hit the M1 button and confirm, and I am now in the fastest mode possible for this vehicle. Italiano! Oh yeah, I like this car so much. I really do. Even though I'm not a big fan of um, carbon fiber, which it has all over the interior, it's not horrible. And the rest of it, it just looks phenomenal. Seats are a little tight for my big American ass, but if you're a slender Italian, yep. I'm not going to use launch control because it's finicky. This whole shifter is incredibly finicky, actually. So I'm just gonna spool it up manually. Oh! oh you got the jump on me. When the moon lifts your eye like a big pizza pie, I just kick Roman's ass. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that did not work. I just squirted the windshield wipers. Just squirt it instead of actually using the paddle shifters because I didn't have it in automatic. Well, that did not work. Did you fall asleep at the wheel or you? That was a bit of a, a train wreck, Nathan. So 
you know, Zach stopped the M1 button for me to put it in its highest performance mode. Well, I also put it in manual shift mode. Oops. So what I managed to do as you roared by me was uh, squirt my windshield instead of actually. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a clean windshield. Well, no, I didn't even, I, I just squirted it. I didn't even wipe it off, as you can tell. So I, I guess I can't chalk that one up as a win. No, let, let's try, let's try it again and make sure that I, I've got it set to automatic. That's much better. Now we're in automatic. With BMW, I am a huge fan of their straight six engines. I just adore them. Best part of the car, powertrain. Best part of the car. All right, let's try it again. That was not uh, well done, woman. Not well done at all. Point two nine. Please tell me that was a proper launch. Well, that was a good race, dude. So I, I got you by about a half a length. Yeah, 5.29 in mine, zero to 60. This thing is awesome. It sounds great, but the cool part was while I was passing you, I could hear your car too. Yeah, I know. They're both awesome cars, man. Really are. No, let's get the Tesla. All right, Tesla All right, it is. Now that it's electricity versus petroleum. Oh, God. And you get to race the Tesla. I'm so looking forward to that. <laughs> God, I know that Tesla's fast thing is, around the track, which we're not doing because Paul, unfortunately, is unavailable. Um, I think he's signing autographs, former stick. He would be the one to take these around the track and really ring them out. Roman and I are not professional drivers, not even by a long shot. And I can tell you from driving these things on the track before, fantastic, best handling SUV I've ever driven, or crossover, or whatever you want to call it. But... We also know, for a fact, that high elevation affects even turbocharged vehicles in a negative way. You do lose a little bit of power. And also that Tesla is stupid fast. All right. We've seen what two petroleum-powered cars can do. Gasoline for you Americans out there, of course. Now it's time for the Tesla. Can the Tesla take on an Alfa Romeo Quadrifoglio? We'll find out. All right, I'm in the Tesla. And the great thing about electric cars is that there's really no revving, no modes, except for this one. Unfortunately, this car, in order to get the fastest zero to 60 time, you have to have the suspension in its very low mode. So I have to drop the suspension, and that gives me all of the beans when it comes to acceleration. And this is not the performance model, so uh, this one is not the fastest Tesla, but the performance model would be much more expensive, whereas this one was 87, so it actually really competes with the Stelvio, which is 88. They're just about $1,000 apart. And I gotta tell you, it's a little stress-free in the Tesla, because all you do is floor it. I'm gonna give you that that sounds a lot better. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't hear you under there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you that. Okay. But, but let's see what that means, you know, when it comes to going down the track. Pretend you're Elon Musk exiting Nobu, and you'll do really well. I see a cone in front of me. You're just gonna take it out. I'm gonna take it out. All right. Bye bye, Nathan. Ooh, it's close, but he's pulling ahead. Bye bye. <laughs> You know, that was pretty 
damn close. That was pretty damn close. I think you got the jump on me, actually. I got a little bit of a jump on you, yeah. and then you just started progressively pulling ahead. Yeah. And then, actually, near the end of it, I think I was starting to close on you again. I think if this were a quarter mile, this would lose. It might, but then again, you know, I've seen these things, and I kind of have a secondary going on, where it just is so linear, and it just keeps going and going and yeah, going. Yeah, no nothing. shifting. Every time you shifted, you know, I was like, my car jumped ahead a little bit. That's exactly it. So what was, what was your uh, zero sixty time? According to this, it's actually slower than I expected. Yeah, hit the memory. Yeah, 5.42. Yeah. yeah now, it's I know that this thing can do around four seconds at sea level. Um, and I think that a better driver who doesn't weigh as much as me would probably get a better time. Yeah, you know, those numbers are always under ideal conditions right. with like, you know, like Paul behind the wheel. Who, let's face it, is not... Um, Massive like me? No, I was going to say, you know... Um, a crap a crap driver like me. No, I was going to say big challenge. Oh, a big challenge, thank you. <laughs> well, well, Paul's a professional a race car driver. <laughs> he knows how to get the most out of a car. And knowing him, you'd probably sneak in and put nitrogen in the tires and do a few other things to make sure everything is absolutely perfect. Well, there you have it. Electricity wins, though. Not much of a surprise. So Nathan, here's the thing that is shifting the world from gasoline to electricity, right? We've got three cars there that are all just a little bit over 80, well, well some a lot over 80,000, but around yeah. 80,000. Right. You've got like the highest performance version of the BMW X3. Right. You've got the highest performance version of the Selvio. Right. And you've got the grocery getter mom vehicle, right? Not even the performance version of the Model X, right? That seats seven and it just beat both of them. You know what's really important? I want you to think about this. Okay. There is something called passion. Yeah. And the BMW and the Alfa Romeo bring that out. Yeah. I don't think the Tesla quite does that. You know what I mean? There's a little bit of something to be said about having an engine note, feeling the car shift, burning down the track, and having the car really just grab and go. The Tesla's like, yep, yeah, okay, on, off, on, off. You know what I mean? It's just like a lack of passion. I, I agree. But when you've got the kiddos in the back and you're taking them to school and you line up against either two of these, right? You can still take them. I mean, come on, that's pretty darn cool. Yeah, it is really cool until you get to a canyon. Or until you actually take them around the track. <laughs> right, which is, uh, you know, I, we'll yeah. We'll leave that to Paul. Yeah, we'll leave that to Paul. Guys, thanks for watching. Remember, check out tflcar.com for more news, views, and of course, real world electric versus, actually it's America versus Italy versus Germany drag review. See you guys next time. Ciao. Bye guys.